Hey everybody, my name is Eric Skinner from Trend Micro and I want to talk to you today about two industry buzzwords but I want to connect them together in an actual practical way which are the terms XDR and Zero Trust. I want to show you how XDR actually works together with a Zero Trust approach to deliver faster response and uh, help you, for example, slow down and detect ransomware. So let's zoom in a little bit more on my slides and get started. So yeah, you might be asking yourself, oh man, do I really want to hear about these two buzzwords? And, and maybe this is going to help you with your bingo card for the event in terms of buzzwords. But I really do want to uh, show you something useful and practical here instead of uh, doing a vendor product pitch. So uh, hopefully it's worth the 15 minutes. So let's find out. So I think of these two concepts uh, in, in, in the following ways. And I'm going to S simplify. So XDR is this term extended detection and response and really its job is to correlate the vast amount of telemetry that comes in across the environment and detect threats that are harder to detect in any individual silo and then to provide a response across that entire environment as well. Zero Trust's approach or philosophy is to say, let's not trust anything uh, by default and let's make continuous assessments to decide whether something is going to be trusted in the moment. And uh, so how do these two things come together? This is my uh, thesis for you today. First of all, the zero trust approach if you implement it in you know, a, any number of practical ways in the environment, is going to slow down attackers and it is going to make it easier for detection software to do its job. And the second part of it is that XDR is going to help a zero trust approach because zero trust really depends on this continuous assessment of the risk across the environment of devices, identities, applications, data, and so on. And threats are, of course, a huge part of that. Threats are form part of your risk assessment and help the zero trust engines in your environment make a decision about access control or uh, data access or, or whatever the case may be. So let's zoom in on these two things and then we'll sort of close it out at the end. So what's the XDR story? Well, the problem with a lot of detection technologies in the environment, including amazing tools like EDR, is they're relatively siloed. So if you take EDR, super awesome at uh, detecting strange activity on, on the endpoint itself, but there's other pockets of activity. So you might have network events, and that's being done in NDR solutions, uh, and uh, then you might have threats in the cloud that you're potentially getting visibility to in a variety of different ways. And then you've got systems like email that are often not very well represented in these kinds of systems and so on. So you're getting a lot of SIM telemetry. You're getting a lot of alerts being sent to the SIM. And then the SOC analysts or maybe your IR teams have to do correlation themselves. And they're doing it on the basis of alerts, not activity telemetry. And this is one of the key differences we're going to we're going to hit on. So the reality in a lot of threat activity in the environment is that it's spread out and connected across multiple silos. And if you can connect the dots in a way that is uh, more illustrative and more informative about what's going on, then you're going to be able to detect threats in a more substantial way uh, and potentially threats that you would have missed in the individual silos. So in this story, a threat came in through email and spread from endpoints to the cloud environment into containers because of compromised credentials and there were additional apps impacted and then it spread into another part of the environment over the network. And this is very hard to piece together if all you're getting is detection alerts in the SIM. So what you want is you want this overall activity telemetry to be gathered up by an XDR system. And uh, that is going to give you the opportunity to have both automated detections as well as hunting and other manual approaches to give you better detection uh, of uh, the threat that might have otherwise been missed in the individual silos. So a lot of people are like, hey, isn't this the same thing as SIM? It's not. And that's not that SIM is a bad thing. And in fact, I think XDR and SIM are, are on a slow but inevitable collision course. Here's the difference today from a practical perspective. So you get some chain of events that's likely suspicious, uh, like the one that we're showing here. And 
you're going to get from one or more of these things, you are going to get security alerts that will go to the SIM. These are not all the activities. When you think of an EDR system, for example, the, the part of the sexiness of EDR when it first arrived on the scene a few years ago was that it was effectively a security camera for everything that was going on in the endpoint. It was monitoring all the events, gathering up all the activity telemetry because it wasn't clear which of those things was important. And uh, you wanted to have that historical record of activity going back seconds, minutes, hours, days, so that you could then piece together a chain of activity. So that's EDR, which is clearly not the same thing as SIM, right? SIM is not looking at all the processes that get spawned and all the other activity on the endpoint. So EDR is seeing all that activity and then sending one or more detection events to the SIM. So XDR is the EDR concept extended across the rest of the environment beyond just the endpoints. That's it. So you're now able to see email activity, network activity, uh, activity from other parts of the system where you can't run an EDR. And that's the whole point of XDR. So it's gathering activity telemetry and then filtering through this mess of telemetry to look for things that uh, appear suspicious and then sends a smaller set of detection alerts to the SIM. So these things work together. It's not about, oh, dump your SIM and use XDR. So that's the, the reason to, to think of XDR as a new approach and the result is the ability to correlate across these environments. And let's take a concrete example. So this would be a, uh, uh, an incident that would be visible from a pure EDR perspective. Here's some activity that are ha that's happening on the endpoint itself. You might detect phishing, you might detect uh, a PowerShell being spawned, you might see credential dumping and so on. And these are the, the MITRE techniques that are associated. The power of XDR is to say, hey, let's correlate that before it hits the SIM with other unusual activity, in this case, in the email system on the left, where we're seeing uh, the spread of that very same email to multiple different accounts, and we're correlating that to a compromised a laptop that in this case belongs to the CFO. Uh, and then you're able to say, okay, because I'm seeing ransomware activity and I'm seeing email activity in these other parts of the system, I can take automated action in the rest of the email environment to make sure that that particular attack doesn't spread faster. So the goal of XDR is to perform EDR style detection across the breadth of the environment. Let's bring in the zero trust side of things. And again, I'm trying very hard not to just uh, blow a lot of zero trust smoke uh, because there's a lot of, of, of smoke out there and confusion and noise. Uh, but this is a very practical concept that a lot of organizations are implemented implementing very seriously. It's not a product, it's a strategy. And really it comes down to never trusting and always verifying, continuously verifying. So how, do these, how, do the, how does this concept connect with XDR? Well, one of the important things in any kind of zero trust implementation is that you're making a continuous assessment of the state of identities, devices, data, and applications as part of a decision before you allow a network hop. And of course, these attackers want to move laterally in the environment. They want to hop from system to system to system, or they want to connect to another application. And the whole point of zero trust is to say, let's by default say no to all of those things. Let's assess the risk of the device, the risk of the identity, uh, the risk of the content being accessed and so on at the time of access and ongoing continuously. And uh, this is done in various different ways by various different parts of a, of a zero trust system. And there are various vendors that can, that can help with this, but we really think it's a critical concept. And um, it, it really plays into uh, examples like this. So if you take uh, a risk insights stack, and this should be the foundation of any system where you're saying you're doing, for example, SASE or ZTNA or um, even, even micro segmentation, but let's focus on things like SASE and ZTNA. You're gonna say, okay, before I allow these connections, 
what is the state of identities, devices, applications, and data? So there are two sides to this. There's threat risks, and my argument is those are, are most effectively coming from an XDR system. So the left column would be the threat risks, and the right column would be posture risks. And so when you think about uh, what those threat risks are in the case of identities, well, it's stuff like, well, there's user login behavior that's really unusual that uh, shouldn't, be, uh, shouldn't be expected either. It's login velocity or brute force attempts or whatever it might be, or email account behavior uh, that's unusual. You have an email account that is sending out internal phishing emails. So that's a sign that you have an identity compromise or you have credential dumping detections. Well, now you can tie that to the credential that's being dumped potentially and you can you can say okay we have an identity risk with that credential or you've got unusual admin account activity in the right column related to identity you're thinking about configuration risks related to identity so oh there's no mfa on the, so these are pre threat pre attack right you've got you've got no mfa configured or an end user has admin privileges and so on and so on there's a myriad of risks there if you think about de detections uh, related to device threats, well, in the left column, you've got stuff like, well, okay, yeah, EDR is detecting a um, uh, suspicious process on the device or uh, an obfuscated PowerShell or whatever else, or this is something that could be happening on an endpoint or, or on a server workload. You could have suspicious network traffic originating from that endpoint. Uh, that would be another sign that you've got a device risk. At the posture level, device risk is about stuff like, well, the OS isn't properly configured, it isn't properly locked down, or your security software doesn't have behavioral detection turned on, or there's no EDR agent present, uh, you've got OS vulnerabilities, and so on. Um, if you if you think about applications, and again, you know, bouncing back and forth from the left to the right column, uh, you could detect across your XDR system that a SaaS or an internal application is, is under attack, and that would raise the risk level associated with that application. Uh, on the posture side, tons of potential misconfigurations or vulnerabilities in the applications that are deployed in the environment. Data risk is uh, brings back the, the, the concepts of DLP, which uh, really I think in isolation have proved very challenging to, to a number of organizations, but when you treat it as an input input to a threat detection, uh, it, can, it can make a lot of difference. Uh, but unusual data transfers are something that you might detect through a network data source where you'd say, wow, this endpoint is suddenly transmitting a huge volume of data to this unusual address, and that feeds a low severity telemetry into the XDR system, but correlated with other things might raise the severity and the risk. And then data uh, posture risk would be stuff like uh, misconfiguration of cloud storage buckets or, or uh, cloud SaaS applications that are storing the data uh, or data being stored in inappropriate locations uh, geopolitically or otherwise. So all kinds of value in considering all these risk insights as you make access control decisions. And if you're, if you're assessing the risk across this whole environment and you're assessing not only the posture uh, before the attack begins, but you're also getting this amazing telemetry from an XDR system that's looking across all the silos, you are definitely going to slow down the attacker because they're gonna have to check all these boxes before they're able to move from system to system or from application to application. That slows them down and it makes them more visible to human or automated detection. So how do you use these risk insights? There are going to be dashboards, of course, in any kind of system that does this for you because various people are going to want to look at the risk levels that are being assessed. But the whole point of them from a foundation of a zero trust approach uh, is, is that they're powering decisions in the rest of the system. So they're powering prioritization decisions, alert investigations, but they're also powering automated access control decisions and enabling that attacker to be blocked as they're trying to move from one part of the system to another. So netting out my story, I think these two concepts that are 
certainly being talked about a lot are, are interrelated and really powerful when they're combined to XDR to do a much more effective job of detecting threats across the organization and zero trust, which is helping slow down those attackers to make them more visible to detection. And all of this is giving you a better chance against threats like ransomware. Hey, thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of Black Hat.